All right, chemistry students, I'm going to go over some examples uh, for this worksheet, naming covalent compounds. Um, your rules for naming covalent compounds are reviewed right here. You've got, if you're, for your first element, the first one that's listed, use your Greek prefix plus the element named. You don't change the name at all for the first one. Um, although the, for the prefix, we don't ever use mono on the first element. On the second element, uh, we use our Greek prefix uh, plus the element stem name, and we always change our ending of our covalent compounds. Just like ionic compounds, we change the ending to IDE. Okay, so for the first one here, we've got P4S5. Okay, P4S5. So the subscript 4 is telling you how many you have, and that prefix is going to be tetra. Okay, that's tetra. Um, so P is phosphorus, and again, if you don't know the names of these, if you don't know what they are, you just have to go to the periodic table right here. P tells you that it is phosphorus. Okay, so we're just going to do the tetra, oops, where is that, get on the pen, remember the four right there tells you that it's tetra phosphorus, and then five is penta, so penta, and S is sulfur, and that will change the ending, changes to IDE. So instead of pentasulfur, it becomes pentasulfide. So that was tetraphosphorus pentasulfide. Okay, the next one, SEF3. So there's no subscript on the SE, and that's a little bit um, one that we don't use a lot. This is SE right here, selenium. Okay, so that's where we get that one. And remember on the first one, if there's only one of them, we don't use mono on the first element. Okay, so we don't say mono selenium, we just say selenium. And then we have three as a subscript on the fluoride, or on the fluorine. So that would become tri, because tri is three right here. Trifluoride. Okay. And then we have sulfur and oxygen. We have, again, we only have one of them. So on the first one, we don't say monosulfur. We just say sulfur. Okay. And it's not monosulfur, but it is monoxide. Okay, but we don't say monoxide because it just kind of, kind of sounds strange. We just drop off one of the O's and it becomes monoxide. Okay, sulfur monoxide, not monoxide. Okay, so that's good for that. And let's look at some of these other examples here. <coughs> Antimony uh, tribromide. Again, that's one that we don't see a lot. So um, here it is right here, number 51. It's a symbol of SB. And there's no prefix for it, so it's just SB. No prefix, but we do have a prefix on the, on the bromide. Okay, bromide is bromine, and that symbol is Br. And the tri means three. Okay, so again, we've used that before. Here it is. Tribromide right there. So we would put a three subscript on the bromine. Okay, the next one here, we've got hexa as a prefix and penta. And we've already seen that penta is 5, and we can go up here and say, okay, 6 is hexa. Okay, so we're going to be using 
hexa six is right there. So boron has a symbol of B, and we have six of them, so we use a six pre sub subscript. And phosphide is phosphorus, so we put the P for the phosphorus, and there are five of them, so we use a five subscript. B six P five. Okay, and then the next one, chlorine dioxide. Chlorine is one we've seen quite a bit. That symbol is Cl. And then oxygen is the oxide. I put an O for the oxygen. And di is the prefix for two. Okay, and again, so we're just using this chart up here to tell us the number of atoms. The one we just did was two atoms is a prefix di. Okay, so that's where you're getting all your prefixes and numbers from. Uh, good luck on this. If you have questions, contact your chemistry teacher. Get in those Google Meets. Get those assignments turned in. Good luck on this.